are turning into 15 minutes bulletin of Vietnam News Agency. I'm Ngọc Lý from Hanoi with the headlines at Ucho. Prime Minister holds talks with Chinese premier in China. Number of domestic individual securities accounts hits 8.96 million. And later, Cat Ba debuts on CNN, showcasing its natural splendor. Vietnam's high-ranking leaders on November 7 sent their congratulations to Donald John Trump on his election as President of the United States. The well-wishers are General Secretary of the Communist Party of Vietnam's Central Committee, Tô Lâm, State President Lương Cường, and Prime Minister Phạm Minh Chính. The Vietnamese leaders affirmed that Vietnam considers the United States a partner of strategic importance and expressed confidence that with the solid foundation built by generations of leaders of the two countries over the past nearly three decades, along with the strong support from President Trump in both his first and new terms. The bilateral comprehensive strategic partnership will continue to grow intensively, extensively, effectively and sustainably for the benefit and aspirations of the people of both countries, as well as for peace, stability, cooperation and development in the region and the world. The same day, Vice State President Võ Thị Anh Xuân sent congratulations to Vice President-elect James David Vance. Here are activities of Party General Secretary Tô Lâm on November 7th. Let's take a look. Party General Secretary Tô Lâm had a working session in Hanoi with the Party Civil Affairs Board of the Ministry of Justice on the occasion of the Vietnam Law Day, November 9th. The party leader acknowledged, appreciated and congratulated the achievements and results that the ministry and the justice sector have gained over the past years. However, he pointed out that the work of improving the institutional framework, particularly the making and perfection of laws, which the ministry bears a significant responsibility, still has many shortcomings and limitations. Furthermore, numerous regulations are not fully consistent, often overlapping, unclear or overly complicated hindering enforcement and causing waste and inefficiency in resource use. The party chief urged the ministry to pay attention to and promptly implementing solutions to address these issues. In order to confidently step into a new era, the reality demands that lawmaking be elevated to a new level, truly creating a powerful driving force for development, the leader stressed. On the same day, Party General Secretary to Lum hosted a reception for Cuba's outgoing ambassador, Orlando Nicolas Hernandez Guillen. Praising the ambassador's contributions to the relationship between the two countries, Lum expressed his satisfaction with the positive developments in cooperation between the two countries in recent times. He affirmed that the party, state and people of Vietnam always attach great importance to the traditional solidarity, special friendship and comprehensive cooperation with Cuba. On this occasion, through the ambassador, the top leader invited First Secretary, President of Cuba, Miguel Diaz Canel Bermudez and revolutionary leader, General Raul Castro Ruz, to visit Vietnam again in 2025. Ambassador Guillen thanked the host leader for the warm reception. He also thanked the leader for his deep attention to the continuous consolidation and tightening of the special friendship between the two brotherly countries. On November 7th in Hanoi, President Lung Kung received Cuban Ambassador Orlando Nicolas Hernandez Guillen for a farewell meeting as a diplomat concluded his term in Vietnam. President Quang lauded Ambassador Guillen for his significant role in bolstering the time-honored friendship and comprehensive cooperation between the two countries. The special friendship between Vietnam and Cuba, nurtured by President Ho Chi Minh, Fidel Castro and generations of the two countries' leaders, is a priceless asset of both nations, he noted. Expressing sympathy for Cuba on the hardships is facing. The host leader stated that Vietnam will exert all-out efforts within its capabilities to assist the Caribbean nation. Ambassador Guillen, for his part, thanked the Vietnamese party, state, 
ministries, and agencies for their unwavering support during his tenure. He said the two countries' relations have been unceasingly solidified, adding that Vietnam's solidarity, friendship, and assistance are always deep in the hearts of the Cuban people. The diplomat also expressed optimism that the 65th anniversary of bilateral diplomatic ties next year will witness even more meaningful activities to further deepen their special fraternal relationship. Prime Minister Fat Ming-Ching is in Yunnan, China, to attend regional summits and engage in bilateral activities. Here are details in our report. Developing relations with China is a consistent policy, an objective requirement, a strategic choice, and a top priority in Vietnam's foreign policy, Prime Minister Chin told Chinese Premier Li Chang at their talks in Kunming City, Yunnan province, on November 7th. Prime Minister Chin said, the two countries should continue to effectively implement common perceptions reached by their top leaders and maintain all level meetings and exchanges to compare notes on the bilateral ties and issues of shared concern. The two sides need to pay attention to well controlling maritime disagreements, not letting issues at sea affect the good friendship between the two countries, he added. For his part, Premier Lee highly valued the Vietnamese leader's working visit to Yunnan province and Chongqing city. Regarding Vietnam's cooperation proposals, the premier affirmed that the Chinese party and government always see relations with Vietnam as a priority in its neighborhood diplomacy. He said China will further open its market to high-quality goods from Vietnam and strengthen transport infrastructure connectivity with Vietnam, among others. On the same day, Prime Minister Pham Minh Chin joined leaders of Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, Thailand and China, as well as heads of the Asian Development Bank and regional and international organizations at the 8th Greater Mekong Subregion GMS Summit in Kunming City, Yunnan Province. Opening the summit, Chinese Premier Li Chang expressed China's willingness to share innovation outcomes promote the connection of hard and soft infrastructure, and enhance sub-regional linkages. He was also committed to offering multi-entry, five-year Mekong Lansong visas for businesses and experts from member countries. At the summit, Prime Minister Chin highlighted the lessons drawn in the 32 years of GMS cooperation and appropriate directions for the mechanism in this new development period. He proposed three key components of new generation economic corridor, including a corridor of technology and innovation, an economic growth corridor, and a green, sustainable, and inclusive corridor. The Vietnamese government leader emphasized the need for GMS members to stay united and coordinate in responding to challenges. Also on November 7th, Prime Minister Pham Minh Chin attended and addressed the 10th Iowati Chow Phraya Mekong Economic Cooperation Strategy ACMEC Summit in Kunming City, Yunnan Province. At the summit, heads of governments and heads of delegations of Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, Thailand and Vietnam emphasized the important contributions of ACMEC's cooperation in the Mekong subregion's socio-economic development. Prime Minister Chin said, ACMEC's cooperation in the coming time needs to be the convergence of shared aspiration, vision, determination, voice, and action. With such a viewpoint, he proposed six contents for ACMEC's cooperation to make breakthroughs in the coming period. The assessments and proposals made by the Vietnamese Prime Minister were hailed by participants and reflected in the conference's documents. Individual domestic accounts increased by over 156,000 in October this year, marking a steady growth similar to that from September, according to data from the Vietnam Securities Depository and Clearing Corporation. For the first 10 months of this year, individual domestic accounts grew by a cumulative 1.73 million, averaging an increase of around 173,000 accounts per month. 
As of the end of October, the number of securities trading accounts held by individuals in Vietnam reached 8.96 million, equivalent to about 8.9% of the population. Meanwhile, domestic institutional investors saw an increase of over 120 accounts in October, compared to 90 in September. For foreign investors, last month saw an increase of 230 accounts, higher than the 202 added in September. The total number of foreign investor accounts in Vietnam currently stands at 47,436, reflecting international investors' growing diversity and participation in the Vietnamese stock market. In total, nearly 156,920 new accounts were opened last month. A Vietnamese delegation is taking part in the 29th International Naval Defense Exhibition Euronaval held at Paris North Philippines Exhibition Center in the suburbs of Paris on November 4 to 7. The Vietnamese delegation visited areas displaying new equipment, technologies, and weapons of some major defense industry businesses of France. The delegation, led by Rear Admiral Pháp Nhu Xuân, Deputy Commander of the Vietnam People's Navy, also had meetings with Vice Admiral Vang Song Dugardin, who is in charge of external affairs at the French Naval Command, and Brigadier General Caroline Salahoud, Director for Asia-Pacific at the Directorate General of Amendments of the French Ministry of Armed Forces. The two sides agreed to step up naval exchanges, focusing on such areas as training, hydrography, the maintenance of French naval vessels, visits to Vietnam, joint search and rescue exercises, maritime security, and some others of common interest. Euronaval, created in 1968 for the French naval industry, has gradually opened up for European and then international manufacturers, becoming the global benchmark for naval defense. From November 5th to December 2nd, 2024, a vibrant promotional video capturing the breathtaking beauty, unique charm, and global significance of Gatba Archipelago will air on CNN, one of America's leading television networks. Initially airing on November 5th, it will run continuously from November 8th to December 2nd, 2024, offering international audiences a glimpse into the allure of Gatba. Ha Long Bay, Cat Bao Archipelago has recently been designated as a UNESCO World Natural Heritage Site, marking a historic achievement as Vietnam's first transboundary World Heritage Site, spanning both Quang Ninh Province and Haiphong City. Vietnam welcomed more than 14.1 million international tourists in the first 10 months of this year, an increase of over 41 percent year on year, according to the latest report from General Statistics Office. In October 2024, international arrivals to Vietnam reached 1.42 million, a 27.6 percent increase compared to the same period last year. The numbers are expected to grow, with the peak season for international tourists, especially ones from European countries, usually lasting from October to March. Of the total 14.1 million figure, nearly 12 million arrived by air, accounting for 84.8 percent of the total marking a 36.9% increase year-on-year. Year. Composition-wise, Asian markets contributed nearly 80% of the total arrivals. For markets, the Republic of Korea, China, Taiwan, China, and Japan accounted for nearly 60%. During the period, the Republic of Korea was Vietnam's largest source of tourists, with 3.7 million visitors. It was followed by China, Taiwan, China, and the U.S. And that's also wrapped up our daily bulletin. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye for now.